the Mercedes-Benz SLR costs a third of a million pounds. There's a very good reason for that huge expense, and it's all down to this badge. The SLR isn't built alongside other Mercedes in Stuttgart. It's built in Woking, Surrey. The Germans knew that the best place to build a supercar wasn't in their homeland, but here in Britain, by a company who are past masters in building supercars and also Formula One legends. Mercedes motor racing partner, McLaren. McLaren take building cars very seriously. This is their new technology centre, rumoured to have cost £200 million. And we're the first and only cameras to have been invited in. As a customer, you're welcome to go and see your SLR being hand-built by McLaren technicians on what must be the world's best-kept production line. As ever, the magic is in the details. There are 37 patents pending just on the way the SLR is built. The entire body shell is made of carbon fibre composites and underneath is the world's first production car to have a carbon fibre crash structure which should behave like a Formula One car in a collision. The brakes are Formula One style carbon with a ceramic surface and in the wet they momentarily apply themselves to remove the film of water that builds up on the discs. You can even watch your car go through stringent wet weather testing. Current colour options are Crystal Lorit Silver and Crystal Galaxit Black. The special paint contains larger than normal metal particles for a deeper lustre. Naturally, there's a car phone. Just press the spanner for a direct line to the factory should you ever require assistance. You can't buy an SLR at your local Merck dealer. Instead, McLaren take you to a special chamber to finalise your exact spec. You might fancy some 19-inch alloys for an extra 7,000 quid. Red aniline racing seats for another seven grand. And what about an £8,500 SLR watch? Then you'd have to write out a cheque for £336,000. Perhaps the most vital part of the SLR experience is the personal induction, because everything on this car has multiple okay. settings. Oh, I drive it. Oh, I just did it. <laughs> oh, so I presume we've got the normal electric seat Here you can adjust movements. the seats in, in six directions, fore and aft, and each seat is custom made to the, for each customer. Oh, are they? Oh. And steering wheel's a bit low. That's, yeah, steering wheel you can adjust with a column. It's electrically old. adjustable. Ups and downs and outs, get the right driving position. And then you want to start it. So key's on the right hand okay, so side. Turn the key to its second position. The dials all go. Jing, so jing, that jing. goes through its startup sequence. You flip the lid on the gear controller. On the top here. Yeah. And ah. the start button. It gives you that real wow factor. Makes, you, <laughs> makes it an event when you start the car. Fighter play. How do I switch it off again then? So you just turn the ignition to its oh, you don't its, press the button again. No, you don't press the button, you just turn the ignition to its zero position. Oh, just starting it was nice. <laughs> but before I can drive it, though, more controls. What are these great dials in the middle? And this is all about the, the gear change, is yeah, it? The dials in the center, first of all, you have three modes. You have a sport mode in automatic mode, which is for everyday use. You have a comfort mode, which starts the car off in second gear and changes the, the, the gears a lot earlier. So well, it's it's tricky more, conditions yeah, and tricky stuff. conditions. Then you have a manual mode, so you can change the gears manually with the touch step movement on yep, the gear lever or with the buttons behind the steering but, wheel. Yep. Then when you're in manual mode, you have three modes. You have a sport, a super sport and a race. Three. Well, one, two, three. One, two, three. When you really <laughs> want to wring the maximum power out of that engine on the racetrack, you can do. Is there that much difference then between what yeah, it changes sport, the, the, super sport and race? Yeah, it changes the, the, the gear shift times, makes it a lot quicker. What's under these? What else have we got? SLR? This under oh. here is you've got the full navigation system, and and what's this little features? funny thing in the middle here? That's for the what's called the air brake, which basically optimises and changes the aerodynamics of the vehicle. What you have is you have an automatic mode here, and a, and a manual mode, and a test. Basically, the test mode is great. If you're sat in traffic and you really want to pose and show off with the car, you can flip it down and hold it, oh, and the yeah. air brake pops up to 65 degrees. Right. Well, I think I've got it sussed enough. OK, off you go. Thanks.
I know that there's a 626 horsepower supercharged V8 lurking under that fabulous long bonnet that reaches out in front of you. And yes, I know that there's ceramic face carbon fiber brake trees that haul the speed off should I need them. But sitting here dawdling along at what, 30 miles an hour, it doesn't feel like any other supercar that I've been in. Apart perhaps from the rumbling of those side exhausts just in front of me, you've no idea that you're in anything other than a top of the range, luxurious Grand Tourer. Until you get a bit of a clear road ahead of you and decide to use the throttle. And the whole world suddenly goes blurred. And you suddenly realise, I better try those brakes out because I suddenly realise I'm going a bit faster than I should do on the public roads. And it is just a car that is a tale of two halves. It is perhaps uh, the first ever Super Tourer. It uh, defines a new category. But apart from that acceleration, it's probably the brakes that are the most impressive. At 60 miles an hour, you can just slam on. <laughs> you check your mirror, you see that the extra boot lid has come up to help stability under heavy braking to keep the rear down. But the car just stops at incredibly short distances. There was some criticism of earlier models that they were too sharp, but I find the pedal feel of this car now to be really good. The Mercedes-Benz SLR McLaren really is a supercar you could drive every day. But I couldn't help but wonder how that usability would transfer to handling on a track. But unfortunately, with just a day to play with this particular SLR, we didn't have time to find out. Until that is, we ask for another one. It's time for the track. Look, you've got to see this. I've got an official letter from Mercedes-Benz. Please do not disengage any of the electronic safety features at any time. Sorry, uh, Rob. My finger slipped. The Mercedes SLR of the 50s stood for sporty light racer, but this SLR at nearly 1,800 kilos is best described as a bit of a handful. You certainly know there's a lot of weight underneath you. <laughs> and you understand why it's got a stiff car on the roads, but it's perhaps not even stiff enough here out of the track. When I try to find the limits, it begins to roll. You think the back's going to go, but the steering isn't that communicative. So you don't actually know when it's going to go through your hands. You only know through your arse. In the end, once you've got it really, really sideways, then you know where the back end is. It's the, it's the halfway in between series, which I'm not quite so keen on. But all the time it's sideways, it's got a very strong feeling. It wants to straighten itself and spin back the other way in a bit of a tank slapper. So I'm never quite as happy as normal when I'm power sliding a car through the corners. Once you've kicked it through that nervous middle part of its handling, I've got the rear end stuck out. It's brilliant. One problem I've noticed with these little paddle shifts is that when I'm cornering, I accidentally change up when I don't want to. Well, that awesome engine really makes this car. The brakes, fantastic brakes. And certainly on a racetrack, they're magnificent. Even cornering with the brakes on, oh, no kick back through the brake pedal, ease off the power, get the nose in, again, the weight of the car, you need to back off and get it tucked into the corners. But even that, there's very little understeer, really, for such a big car. It does turn in very well. <laughs> oh. If only the steering had a bit more feel, if only perhaps I could have a sport suspension settings for track use. <laughs> This would be a mighty car. As it is, it's just a mighty Mercedes. Stig that in your pipe and smoke it.
The SLR has awesome credentials, but as this vigorous wheel turning shows, it doesn't quite have the ultimate handling poise required to be hailed as the definitive supercar.